Hello everyone. In this video um, was inspired by uh, something I saw on the Kilo Hearts uh, Twitter post um, and I've got the link to that up here and maybe I'll just uh, pop it in the comments or something like that so you can go and see the source for the inspiration for this video. And then when I watched that video um, my idea was I wonder if I could kind of do what they're doing but not do it in their software but do it in uh, Bitwig using the grid and anything else I can get my grubby little audio hands on. Uh, so here I am. So as a brief description of what we've got, we've basically got one sample here which is me whacking my uh, insulated water bottle and it sounds like this. Cool kind of beautiful on its own. But today's mission was how could we re-synthesize this or use this as a model uh, um, and then build a new instrument out of it. So what they raised in the kilohertz post uh, is, is really quite simple but also really quite fascinating. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag in an EQ8, uh, EQ plus, uh, my live speak sneaking in there, and then we're going to have a wee rummage through the settings, uh, which are over here. So this is what we're interested in. Now, normally this is on, you know, medium, fast or something. So it would look like uh, this. And you see it all moving. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the speed to freeze. And that will do exactly what you expect. So now what we've got, if we expand this up, is we've got a kind of snapshot of the harmonics of the sound that we played through this EQ. And all I did was grab a band and try and match up, as you can see here, the harmonic footprint of what's going on with this. And you can, you know, you can tweak these to try and help you get to where you want to go. So if we bring it kind of like that, you can see that I've basically mapped in the eight bands available to us in this EQ where all the resonant peaks are of this water bottle donk. Okay, so we just literally arbitrarily grabbed in a band, matched it right, as best as we could. One thing I did take off was the adaptive cue because with that on, the more you boost, the steeper it gets. And obviously, the more you attenuate, the steeper it gets. So I didn't really want that. Um, but, you know, experiment with it however you feel that you need to. So now we've got this kind of harmonic fingerprint in our EQ. We're going to explore what we can do with it. Okay, cool. So we've stashed that for later. Let's go to the simple version up here in this kind of turquoise. Turn that off. So we've built a little grid patch here. And what we've got is a burst of noise in stereo, but we can turn that on or off. We've got, um, you know, an AD, so a, a simplified ADSR with just an attack and decay. And we can use whatever uh, model we would like. Maybe analog will work. We're then going into a bandpass filter to shave off the bottom and the top. We've then set this, which is amazing in Bitwig. You can type C3 rather than 262 point blah, 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 blah. And the filter will now uh, be basically at C3. We've turned up the resonance to the verge of self-oscillation. So that's going to generate the kind of poo poo sound. And most importantly, we have key tracking on. So again, we can always go in and show help. And it'll tell us here key tracking amount, the amount of devices pitch signals added to the modules cutoff bus. So in a more maybe accessible speak, that means if I go up an octave in my key, I want this filter to follow. If I go down, I want it to track down. So now we have a kind of playable resonant filter. We can attenuate it if we need to. I've got a velocity multiplier over here. So do you want to listen to the MIDI velocity coming in? And if you do, turn it up. So if I hit hard notes, it will be loud. If I hit soft notes, it will be quiet. Or we can ignore that for now. And then back out to uh, Bitwig so we can hear it. So this is what we've built, OK? Or what I've built. And if I switch this off, obviously you will hear, we've just got just a tiny burst of noise. But now when we send it through a bandpass filter four pole, and we bump up the resonance to the point of self oscillation, and we've got a trackable filter, all of a sudden we've got tuned noise, if you will, or, or playable noise. Okay, cool. So that's our basic model. That's what we're going to use as our impulse, as our trigger, as our performance type. So remember, I mean, how many performance inputs can you 
have to generate noise. So we can blow down a tube, we can blow into a reed, we can bow, uh, which is basically resistance, irritating a string, we can strike something, and there's not that many more. So this is going to help us change how this feels. So for example, if we pull back the attack time, obviously, kind of takes on a blowed, fluty, recorder type vibe. But for now, we'll leave it on this more glockenspiel, you know, uh, marimba type vibe. So all I did then, once we've built our little noise making impulse machine, is go over here, pick up the EQ, and slap it right next door. If you hold down Control or Alt on a Mac or Option on a Mac, you can just see the little plus symbol coming in there, which I've already done. So now we've got our tuned EQ, and that's amazing. But we have one problem. What we also need to do is perhaps move the EQ as we go up and down the keyboard, because we're we're moving the filter as we go up and down the keyboard, but our EQ would be stagnant or stationary. So this is where Bitwig shows its ultimate power once again, when we look for the little circle with the arrow, which is the universal AMA modulator symbol. And we come in here and we can switch this on. And what we've got is a linear key tracking. So go up an octave, double the frequency, go down, half it, and so on. So what I did was turn on the modulator and then map it to the EQ. So as we can see here, if I hover over in the left-hand info panel, you'll see all the little blue marks pop up. And I've just mapped this 100% to each of the frequencies by grabbing it, turning it on, coming over to your frequencies and just tracking up or down all the way. So now what's going to happen is our resonant peaks that we've built by using a fixed snapshot of our water bottle bash doom, is now going to track up and down the keyboard and our filter noise bandpass is going to track up and down the keyboard. So now we have trackable, playable noise. Awesome, cool. So that's the basic idea, right? And that's quite quiet. So then what I've done is I've expanded on that idea and I've built a slightly bigger patch. But there's nothing really going on here that we haven't really seen before. Ignore the right hand section, we'll get into that in a wee minute. So we've got noise again. We can shape it again, amplitude over time. I've added distortion on a little blend, so you know, all the way left is just clean top, all the way right is just distorted, and find a nice wee happy balance because, you know, everybody loves distortion, right? And then we've got one bandpass filter, tuned to C, slightly just away from full resonance, into a mixer, attenuator in case we need it, we will in a minute, turn down the output of the mixer, velocity melt again if we're interested in, in mapping our MIDI velocity to our amplitude of our output, and then I've just repeated the same process for three further times so that one I just typed in you know a different C a different C again and then a lower one so we've kind of got a nice spread of mid C upper C high frequency content and then a low bass boost and then you know everybody loves distortion or at least I do um, and so I'm going to distort the bottom end and here we can blend how much we want of that distorted booty fantastic how does it sound well let's break it down part by part so we end up with First, upper harmonics coming to life, and furthermore, fantastic, let's turn the blend all the way down, and then last but not least, and of course we can tune in how much bottom end we want, and all of a sudden we've got this kind of complex marimba, marimba vibe. And of course we can change how it... And tune it to your heart's content. Fantastic. So I've just taken the same idea and then just riffed upon it a little. Let's add some distortion back in and... Hit soft. Hit hard. Fantastic, and then just a little attenuator because this can get quite loud. All right, fantastic. So in order to maintain it that we're inside the grid and we're not using anything else, so we're not using any plugins or any uh, 
third party tools and toys, I thought, well, why don't we add some reverb? So although this isn't really the video for the reverb, we're here and why not explore it? So we're taking the combo mix of all of the resonance, of all of the filters, all playing together, which is feeding our main bus. And we're taking a sub feed of it, a high and a low pass so we can shave off the bottom and shave off the top. And then that will bandpass limit whatever's going through the reverb network. We've then got this stereo split object, which is wonderful. And we've got, we're going to use all four holes. This is the L signal. This is the R signal or channel one, channel two. So every signal in the grid is stereo, whether you know it or not, which allows us to do naughty things to the left side and naughty things to the right side. So let's talk our way through that first. So the left signal is going into a long delay. Long delay is important because, uh, sorry, because it says, oh goodness, hand meltdown, because it says delay set in time or beats allows feedback combinations or connections. That's really important because that's what we're going to do. So left signal out, long delay in, set to time, not beats. Doesn't really matter, but I'm going to work in time. And then we're going to daisy chain our way through one all pass, two all pass, three all pass, four. And then we'll see at the end of this, we're going to kind of rebuild the stereo image by bringing it back into a stereo merge. So we're kind of rebuilding it, ends up as one cable, and off we go back through a high pass, back through a low pass, so we can tune the output of our reverb, we can tune the input of our reverb, and then this is how much feedback and reverb we want. Cool. Same thing on the right. Long delay, set to some time, I'm not being specific. And then all pass, all pass, all pass, all pass, build it back as the right signal, and away we go. At the same time, and this is why I'm kind of in love with this little block, we're down here. And what we've got is the mid signal. So anything that's the same, equal in both speakers, if you will, we can then bang it through a chorus. So we've got some movement, a long delay, then a repeated process, and then away we go. The side signal we're bringing in in exactly the same way. We can tune how much of that we want or how much this we want. So we've got mid verb in green, side verb in kind of whatever this is, turquoisey green. This time we're using a flanger that feeds the long delay for all passes and back home. So now what we can do is kind of choose, do we want some of this? Do we want to fade in some of that? Um, they all get some together here high and low pass so we can tune the output of reverb back in we will hear that blend and then we will feedback go through the system again hear the blend feedback and away we go so we've created a nice kind of decaying feedback loop at the same time in order to not have this stagnant or a fixed reverb output we've grabbed a little sample and hold lfo which is just kind of wibble wobble shape maker We've given it as many steps as we can and we've kind of averaged it out with some interpolation. We've then got an attenuator so we can choose how much this is affecting our destinations. And then if we hover over this, you'll see where I've rooted it to. So all of the all passes are changing by a certain amount. And I didn't really care what the amount was. I just clicked on here and went up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down to see what would happen. So when we fire in this, this is going to very slowly just wibble wobble over time as we can see here it's just putting out some random value and we've mapped that random value to a modulator and then the modulator has a bunch of destinations or targets so now hopefully if we switch this on and we fade her up and so we're all inside the grid Polygrid. Of course, we can pan these harmonics. And we can tune our input and our output and play around with our delays. And you should probably hear at the end of the reverb, you have this kind of pitch shifting. Reminiscent of kind of eventide style, if you're familiar with eventides. Not very expensive on the CPU either. And we can fade in some mid-chorus modulation. Oh yeah! Because we've got loads of feedback going here. And so now we have what 
you might consider, or I hope you do, a kind of interesting, playable, changeable model based on a water bash. All made in the grid, using some cool tricks, with a tuned EQ and a tuned filter, and just riffing on that idea. And hopefully, you like what you hear. I hope you find this useful. If you do, I suppose is this the point in the video where I'm supposed to say, please click the like button because it helps the evil algorithm. Or if you'd like to subscribe, maybe do that too, but there's no pressure. I'll make the videos whether you watch them or not. I just kind of like it. Anyway, hopefully that's useful and maybe I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.